Hello, my name is Dan Johnson and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my Doctor Who steelbook collection. Again! And I'm talking about it today because I feel like we've reached a checkpoint. We have, well, a very small amount of people that were lucky enough to get Series 9 have every steelbook for the new series of the show. And maybe, I hope not, but the BBC might consider them finished now until we get series 13 let's hope not because i know that there's a lot of hope for re-releases of some of the earlier series because the ebay hiked prices and series 9 um in my case uh, series 10 floats around occasionally and that kind of stuff people really would like to complete their collections and i don't see why not and i just hope that the bbc will do that eventually um but it does feel like we've reached the end for now. So today I'm going to be going through all of my steelbooks that I own from the Peter Cushion movies to Classic Who and the reanimations to New Who. <sighs> well consistency's gone out the window. So what happened was that my camera decided now would be a good time to give me the same still frame of my face for the next 12 minutes. So that footage was lost. So welcome to the patchwork version of this video. So this is the first still book and that is for the Peter Cushing movie, uh, Doctor Who and the Daleks. Now this is the serialization that was done originally in the 60s, um, but this is like a year later done again and rehashed back to the public um, as a film this time with a bit more budget. Um, I suppose this one's okay, but I'm not the biggest fan of the serial itself. I feel like the serial that it's based off is a bit like shaky in the middle and they still have that shakiness, but the still book itself is absolutely gorgeous. There's a lovely image there, um, on the back and I think the artwork's great as well. And the quality of picture that they've been able to get from all the way back in the 60s is amazing. So this is the seal book for the second film and with this one they decided to do something slightly different is they dropped the whole idea of the Doctor altogether. Uh, because the title of this film, and you can read it on the spine if you wish, is Daleks Invasion Earth 2150 AD. So they just realised that the Daleks were the selling point of these things and just went with that. This movie is Dalek Invasion of Earth um, but made with more money and now a kind of 90 minute thing with comedic scenes. There's Daleks exploding, what is there not to like? It's like, it's almost what they wanted to do with the serialization, but realized that they couldn't because of budget restraints. This also comes with this horrible piece of cardboard that I'm gonna talk about now because it's the only still bike I own with this kind of weird thing. Um, the one for the first Dalek film also included this, but I didn't get it because the seller that I bought it from just didn't have it and I wasn't fussed because I hate them anyway. Um, and with this first one that I ended up buying, which was the second one, ironically, this uh, wraps it like that. And they put glue underneath it here and at the top. Uh, the issue is if you don't really have it in there enough in your shelf and it wriggles, as you can see there, it's wriggling. Um, it's just completely impractical. Uh, so I have it in a steel protector, the cardboard, and then the bag. It's a very strange way of doing things, but I, cause I feel like it's going to damage it at some point. And then we come into the stuff that's actually canon and the first steel book I think they made for one of these. And that is the steel book of the power of the Daleks It's an amazing story. It is Patrick Troughton's first uh, episode as the doctor. Um, you know, it's, it's regeneration story um the daleks are amazing within this episode i think the animation is good enough i mean it's not excellent um but if you just go in there expecting them just to give a bit of visuals to the audio then that's what it does this still book is also in like the most pristine condition i don't i think i've ever had a still book in uh not brand new the thing was like you can see the cardboard is perfect, like fitted, there's no crinkles in it at all. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I bought this, I was very lucky, because it took it took me a really long time to get this. The first time I bought it off uh, a certain website and the thing arrived completely damaged. So I sent it back hoping to get a replacement, uh, but they didn't have any, apparently. So I didn't get to one and just got the refund. And then not too long after, maybe a week or two after, this was on eBay for 30 something pound as a bidding thing. And I was bidding on it and I won it for 30 pound. Luckily, not many people bid against me. So I actually ended up saving a bit of money in the end. If I had to pick a steelbook that would be my favorite, it'd be that one. 
uh, especially of the classic stuff, because I just think that that looks really cool. Um, maybe I, I just am that way because I got a really good deal for it. Then we have our next steelbook, which is the steelbook for the Macro Terror, which might be one of my least favourites of all of them. The only reason it's my least favourite is I feel like the design doesn't service the steelbook medium very well. Is, is steelbooks really a medium? Um, because the colours are quite dark and I tend to find that brighter steelbooks work better than darker steelbooks. Um, and with this one, this is, okay, this is the Macro Terror. This is also a Patrick Troughton story. Um, it's contained, if you remember Gridlock, there is the crabs at the bottom of the motorway. This is the episode that they were taken from. Um, something I didn't know until this story came out. So the Macro um, are very different in animation than they would have been in if the episode actually exists. Um, so I suppose that in that respect, it's much better. And I think the animation is really nice within this episode. It's probably one of the better ones. Um, I don't know why. I think it might just be because it had the big crabs and stuff like that. It could do them a lot better than, um, you know, a couple of rooms. And, you know, because they're quite bulky, they're quite easy to animate, I suppose. Um, so I quite enjoyed this story. It's an episode, though, that I, that I do need to watch at some point soon because I watched it once when it came out and I haven't watched it since, which is my fault, but it's because it's only a four parter, uh, but I will uh, get around to it at some point, but it's a pretty solid story last time I watched it. And then our next steel book is also one of my least favorite steel books. And that is the steel book for the faceless ones. The reason that I'm not a big fan of this steel book is because I feel like the idea of the faceless ones is not resembled within this image. Although once I watched the story and realized that a lot of it is just the airport, I was quite happy with the steel book. Um, but I can't say it's one of my favorites still. The story itself, I do feel like is quite long uh, for a six parter, but it has some really nice stuff in it. You know, the idea that they would, you know, get actual planes and the faceless ones look lovely, even though it's a shame that if they were done in real life, they would look a lot better than the animation, I think, because within animation, everything has this kind of smooth effect, um, but there's a lot more bumps and there's a lot more texture um, on the real life uh, versions of the faceless ones. I do find this still book a bit of a shame though, because there is a lot of imagery, such as this note thing here, um, that I really like, and I think would make a really cool steel book. A kind of gothic image um, of like half faceless one, half person, I think would be really cool. And I think it's a shame that we didn't get that with this. Our next steel book is Fury from the Deep. Now this is a pretty cool steel book with the kind of evil seaweed wrapped around the TARDIS. Um, and Overall, the story, I really liked it. I mean, you can mock it for having evil seaweed, but it was still pretty um, horrifying in moments. And it had a lot of sort of horror characteristics characteristics that I really liked. Um, the animation itself was a bit weak, but I mean, what do you expect from these kind of things? I mean, we really should expect better, but then again. I also find this still but really striking and quite uh, nice. Once again, I think it might be the bright colours that make them look better, um, but pretty solid release. Interesting thing about that one, um, so those three that I just talked about, all of them I bought on release uh, for about 27, I don't know what the retail price of them is, I think it's about it, um, but Fury from the Deep was a bit weird because I bought it for retail price but for some reason unlike the other ones, the prices of them normally hike. This one didn't hike and I'm not quite sure why. You can currently get it for like £15. So if you're after a steelbook, um, and promise that you won't fall into the rabbit hole I've fallen into. That would be your best bet. And then we have one of my favourite episodes of Classic Who, Spearhead from Space. This is John Pertwee's first episode. It's really well written. And I just find it such a pleasure to watch. And because it's it was filmed on film originally, it converted very well to Blu-ray, which meant that we got this release. And I think that it's just absolutely gorgeous. The image quality is amazing. This still book... I think it was like a Zavi exclusive thing. They didn't make many copies of it. 
Um, and it does have this very weird, um, almost plasticky feel, which is ironic because it's about the Auton. But overall, this release is absolutely lovely. Then we have our uh, final classic one so far, which is Sharda. Now, this is a story I watched recently, and something that I really do wish that they did, which they didn't do for some reason, is add in the cliffhangers. I understand that the episode wasn't finished, so therefore didn't have cl cliffhangers, but doing it in part would have made the thing a lot easier for me to consume than just watching it in one go. Um, because it's still a six-parter. So bear that in mind, because they don't, you know, take breaks. This thing is like a, a two-and-a-half-hour movie. Um, and because of Classic Who and how it's formed, it doesn't work in terms of pacing. Um, and because it's supposed to be enjoyed as a six-parter, but I don't think they knew where the cliffhangers were or something like that, um, which meant that there's no option to watch it in episode format. It's a shame because the episode itself is really good. Tom Baker's on form. Uh, they spent a lot of time on location in, I think it was Cambridge. There's lots of lovely little moments with Tom. Um, there's a moment with a bike and it says no cycling and he apologises to a sign, which is quite a nice moment. Um, overall really big ambitious story that I did enjoy I was just put off by its runtime but the still book itself looks lovely you can't deny that this thing has some kind of style like it's a really lovely design I do feel like it kind of folds in on itself though and looks a bit like a bit of a match of colors at times because you know the reds and stuff like that it kind of blends together and makes a bit of a, a weird um look the steelbook for the web of fear i think it is is coming soon i don't know the exact release date but that is on the way at some point obviously i've pre-ordered it um but i look forward to getting that it's interesting to see what they do with this new animation style because i think a lot of people complained about fury from the deep and people continuously complain about the animation style and how it looks and everything like that and they've really gone for something very different with this one and i don't know if i like it as much, I haven't been as willing as I have with all the others, so this will be an interesting release to look out for. Then we come on to our new Who Steel books. This one is of series one, obviously. This one, I was very lucky, okay, because you might be quite annoyed by this, um, because this thing is now worth, for some reason, hundreds of pounds on eBay um, and various other places. Um, I bought this at retail price. <laughs> After the release of the Series 2 Steelbook, I went back and I bought Series 1 because it was still available. So I was able to get it, which was very exciting. Um, and wow, it's a really lovely Steelbook. Obviously, the artwork at the front is gorgeous. The artwork on the back is, I think, probably one of the best um, back artworks we have. The series itself is really good. Um, as many people will tell you, Christopher Eccleston is amazing. I look forward to seeing his... Big Finish releases at some point in the future, I thought. I mean, next month. Oh my god, next month. Our next steelbook is my first steelbook that I bought, um, and that was Series 2. I bought this because I just loved the design, and Series 2 is one of my favourite series. I mean, my opinion on that has changed slightly since I bought it, um, but it's still one of the, my childhood memories in terms of Doctor Who, so I still really like it. Um, but this still book is also absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at the back design, it's amazing. Um, and obviously the front design and the colours and all of that kind of stuff is just absolutely gorgeous. The episodes themselves, like I said, there's some real good ones in there, but at the same time, there are some real duds. Um, but we won't talk about them, such as Fear Her. Our next still book is the still book for series three, one of the best series um, of New Who and of David Tennant's, David Tennant's era. Um, the still book has a lovely colour to it. I'm not quite sure whether the series really reminds me of purple, but at the same time, I just think it's quite nice. The back of the still book is also lovely. I'm pretty sure that there was a sort of outcry at one point to have the steelbook changed because it had an image of Derek Jacobi on the back and they ended up changing it to John Sim because people just asked for it because they felt like he was the the more prominent master for which he is um, and I felt like that was a, a nice thing that they did with this release just to make sure it was just perfect. My next steelbook is the steelbook for series four. You have Donna and you have the Doctor being absolutely amazing together. You have some big foes, a kind of Avengers Assemble thing at the end. Um, just an amazing series with a really lovely steelbook. I love the kind of colour and the use of orange, which reminds me a lot of the series, um, which I really did enjoy. And I felt like, you know, the 
the gorgeous artwork on the back of Davros as well is just amazing. Our next steelbook is the steelbook for the specials. Now this contains some of the most momentous episodes within David Tennant's era. You know, the end of time, the waters of Mars, brilliant episodes. Well, I mean, they're quite good. I mean, and the end of time's a bit in places, but still. I really do like the steelbook design, right? But I do have an issue with it. I feel like it's just too dark. And this goes back to a point that I had earlier. Uh, with I think the Macro Terror is that some steel books like this one that are just dark. Um, I mean they have some nice glows and kind of stuff in them, but I do feel like the darkness doesn't really go well for, on steel books. If you look at the back, for example, there's a kind of darkness, but there's colours in there which I think really stand out. But then the front, I think it kind of loses david and just book he fades into the background a bit but that has nothing to do with the artwork itself that's just kind of the the print and the manufacturing uh, the artwork itself is lovely and i'd love it i love to see it on one of those big uh movie poster things you know like like them our next still book is the still book for series five an absolutely amazing series here from stephen moffat i think the artwork is gorgeous as well i just love how she included the painting all the way through the steel book uh which i think gives it a nice effect of it relating to the series which is something that i really enjoy with the these later ones is that they relate a lot to the series that they're made for which i really enjoy i also bought this one at uh, retail price in fact i did an unboxing of this one actually i did an unboxing of quite a few of these there is a playlist kind of over here or over there and there will be the list of the ones that i've done um some of them might be a bit young in terms of my face and inexperienced in terms of how to make a video um but I plan to do a bit of editing to them to correct them to make them passable by my standards. Sophie Cowdery then did an amazing steelbook for series 6. She's added a gorgeous colour to this one that makes it very striking on the shelf um, and within your hand. She's also added the elements you know that I talked about with series 5 you know from the series and it resembling the series that it's made for which i really enjoy and she did the same with this one we come on to series seven i think this might be one of my favorites to be honest i think the design for this one is absolutely gorgeous i love how she split because this is also done by sophie cowdery um i love how she split it to a and b because the series is a and b i really enjoyed that element and they had different uh, color schemes due to that which i thought was gorgeous so you kind of get two steelbooks if you're not a big fan of you know part a you have part b which i did quite like even though the would bend the wrong way but you know still the color schemes the composition just absolutely amazing once again so we've had a steel book for all the way up from series one to series seven now um and i think it was inevitable that at some point we would get one for the day of the doctor the 50th anniversary special now this one is also really lovely lee binding did this one who does the collection box sets and i also believe he did a lot of the 50th anniversary uh promotional art stuff he did an amazing job with this still book it really has a huge scale i love the daleks i love the color scheme the way he was able to fit the war doctor and all of that kind of stuff without the thing feeling uh too cramped i think it's the right amount of cramped this still book is basically the contents of the collector's edition uh box set brought into steel book form which is really nice so you get adventure in space and time uh you get night of the doctor you get um time of the doctor uh day of the doctor you get the name of the doctor for some reason and you get a whole bunch of sort of documentary stuff based on the 50th you know the five doctors that kind of stuff um and with this i, ju I just think that this one's just another amazing looking still book now we have our most recent still book and that is series eight this is a lovely looking still book here done by sophie cowdery um i love the color scheme even though i do feel like it matches with some other ones that we've already seen like series seven um, but it is very striking and very bold. I wasn't quite sure by the promotional images whether this one would be a good one, but now I have it in person and looking at it, I think it's a lot more striking than just seeing an image. The back of it is also really nice, even though some people were a little bit annoyed that Clara was on the back and not the front. 
Um, I'd just like to point out that River Song uh, was on the back of the Series 5 steelbook and no one batted an eyelid. But for me, the back artwork is just absolutely phenomenal. I also enjoyed how within this one, I mentioned it in my unboxing, that the discs have changed slightly due to the steelbook release, which is something that they never really did before until this one. Now we come down to the final three steelbooks. We have Peter Capaldi's Swan Song now with series 10. Bill Potts and Peter Capaldi are really good within this series. The artwork for it is gorgeous. I mean, there's some real duds in here, but at the same time, you have episodes like Well Enough in Time, Doctor Falls. Um, I, I'm quite partial to Knock Knock. Um, so as I've kind of got a little bit older, I suppose, or kind of been taken out of the whole media bubble with the series, I think I've enjoyed it more. Um, and the artwork for this one is probably the most original artwork you get for any other still book. Um, so I have to congratulate them on that. I would say because it is like the most original and the most sort of off what they did with the others, it doesn't really match them. But you know, some people have asked for a series 10 still book re-release, so if that happens, we get a nice matching set. Then we go on to one of the, I think, the weakest steelbooks, and that is the steelbook for series 11. This is very plain. It could have worked, but I just don't think it does. Maybe it's the darkness thing again, um, but I just didn't think it worked very well, especially the back. Um, not very striking, if I'm honest. There was, and it's a shame, because there's lots of gorgeous artwork for series 11, and yet None of that came through in this. Then again, the least said about series 11 and the better, isn't it? And then our final steelbook is the steelbook for series 12. Overall, a bit of a rocky series, um, much better than series 11 for sure, uh, but still had some issues. The Timeless Children, something that is still sending ripples with the, with the Doctor Who fandom uh, a year later. Um, the steelbook itself, though, I think is really nice. It definitely improves what series 11 lacked. Um, it's got some gorgeous colour and some lovely artwork. The artwork at the back is also very nice as well. I really appreciate the craft that went into almost painting the characters. Um, it's almost like you're holding a, you know, a, an art an art print. It's a steelbook. But saying that, steelbooks are art prints, aren't they? Really, at the end of the day. Um, so, what is your favourite steelbook um, out of the collection? Do you have that series nine steelbook? And uh, no, you cannot brag in the comments that would be really annoying do you like me hope for a re-release of the series 9 steelbook just fingers crossed everyone due to another camera fault i've switched to voiceover to end this video so thank you very much for watching hopefully you did enjoy this video if you did make sure you give it a like subscribe if you're new and i shall see you soon goodbye <laughs>